Welcome to this rebroadcast of an interview with Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. In that kind of anxious depression, or we choose to learn something from it and try to pull ourselves up. Welcome to a second chance for the most positive and uplifting time on the radio. Stay tuned and get in tuned with your host, Gina Kane of Second, second chance, chance Radio. Radio. Welcome to a Second Chance Podcast. Our guest today brings 20 plus years experience in the addiction and counseling field with him. He began a blog that turned into a coaching and counseling and consulting group. He's a certified addictions counselor as well as a certified life coach. And as all of our guests on this show, he is here today to share his own personal journey with you. So please welcome Chris Shea of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here on your show. We're so glad to have you. And before we get into your story, could you take a minute to tell us a little bit about yourself so our guests can get to know you? Yeah, sure. As you had mentioned, I've, I've been in the counseling field for quite some time. And I also uh, write my blog, which is where it all began. Um, and I also speak at conferences and do trainings across the country, host a podcast, and recently uh, published a small kind of book booklet uh, over on Amazon and all. So um, I keep myself very busy. I'm also a professor at two different universities, and I work with teenagers at a high school. So life keeps me quite active. <laughs> Sounds like your time is at high demand. I'm grateful that you've given us some of it. And now I would like to ask you to take us to that moment in time that you would consider the worst moment of your second chance story, and we will share what you learned. Well, I've really, uh, my life has been interesting as it's gone through different phases and uh, where uh, my adult life began to where it is now is totally different. But if, you know, we pick one of the lowest, that was really about when I started blogging, which we're talking maybe about five years ago-ish. Much of my professional career, uh, which started more so you know, about 20 years ago, I'm a very type A type person. So uh, mm -hmm. everything is very much rushed and stressed and anxious and as we just mentioned, I do a lot of things, but what I'm doing now is very different than before. And in my professional career, I, I was able to move up into administration and CEO and executive director and and was really kind of top of the game at, at the time. And that was great. I mean, I, I really loved it. But what I knew through all of that was that I was also losing who I am. And I couldn't, you know, really note that as I aged and as time moved on, there was something missing, something inside, something not right. And I started thinking that, you know, maybe I need to change. Maybe I need to get out of the, the fast paced life of what I was doing. And especially with the um, administrative side of it all. So as luck would have it in this small town in, in Maryland where I am, there was a high school and they needed a uh, campus minister chaplain at the high school. And one of the things that I do besides counseling is I have degrees in theology and spirituality. So I thought, you know, this would be a great change for me. And I didn't realize the true impact or changes was going to have in my life where I went from the kind of top of my game all of a sudden, uh, a few weeks later, I'm sitting in a high school office wondering, where do we go from here? And I took my whole way of thinking, the whole type A with me, and I was stressing out during that entire academic year and trying to bring a corporate view into what is not at all a corporate world. Mm. And when it really hit me for this whole where is this low point is that summer and one of the things that I was looking forward to is well if you work in academia you typically are going to have the summer free 
I haven't had the summer free since I was a teenager. (laughs) So, you know, here I am, you know, uh, upper forties and all, and, you know, looking at, you know, almost three months of do what you want, you know, and, and I'm looking forward to this Mm -hmm. until a couple weeks into it. Um, because for me in, in my type A, I mean, yeah, I would take a vacation, you know, a week or so vacation. And, you know, so the first week of summer was great. It was like, you know, okay, this is vacation time and <laughs> awesome. And then second week starts rolling around and then it becomes, um, what do I do? You know, and, and I started to realize as the days went on, I wouldn't really call it depression, but it was hard to sleep. My mind was going all over the place. It was, you know, difficult to stay focused. I I really, in a sense, just felt lost. Mm -hmm. And it was through that of of working through that, and we can go to more specifics, but overall it was trying to figure out, you know, where is life and, and what do you do now, so I was kind of forced into almost like a retreat where I had all this time and it was either I'm going to sit here and be miserable and wonder if I made the right choice or not, or let's kind of learn something through this. And the more I started focusing on the learning, one of the things that popped in was the whole mindfulness and I started learning more about that. And then I started thinking to myself, well, you know, maybe I need an outlet, you know, like I always told my clients do journaling work. So maybe I'll start some journaling, but that's where the blog came in. It's like, well, maybe I'll do journaling online because maybe somebody else will learn something through this, just like I'm trying to learn something through this. Uh, okay. That's where that whole thing started. It just started as a, a simple, let's make a somewhat public journal and just share things that are popping into my head, put it out there and where it goes, it goes. And that was the only point in, in that whole thing. But It was through that and then over time uh, in these, you know, last five years or so that, you know, I've been able to really refine my life to live in a mindfulness mindset without that whole type A thing. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I mean, I do a lot of stuff now and I'm involved in a whole bunch of different things, but these are things that I'm choosing in a very specific way to do them where they have the same meaning for my life. I, I'm focused now on on how do I find inner peace and how do I help others to find that inner peace. Mm-hmm. So everything that I'm doing is in some way connected to that. And I make sure I'm taking that time for myself. So I learned a lot over these years But that was really, you know, a a shock for me because I never, ever expected that summer to be the way that it was. I think most of our listeners can relate to that place that you share because many of them through accident or illness have been forced to leave their job or they've had an extended time away from their job and find Mm -hmm. themselves in that place that you're talking about. True. You know, and, and I'd worked many years ago as a hospital chaplain and you know, saw that, you know, head on. And uh, a few times in my career, I was laid off, you know, for a couple months. So, and and I think that was part of it is as that summer went on, I began to mentally go back into that place of like, I was laid off, you know, and I had to keep reminding myself, no, you're not laid off. You're, you're just off for a couple months. But yeah, there's a, a big transition in life. And, you know, I think the the main thing that comes out of this is, you know, how do we make those choices? You know, so we either choose to sit in that kind of anxious depression or we choose to learn something from it and try to pull ourselves up. I love that way of looking at it. Do you say that starting the blog would be your turnaround point? Oh, most definitely, because that gave me something to focus on. In some ways, if I were to counsel myself, in some ways I would say, hey, that's a great thing to do it. But in in another way, I would say, well, wait a minute, you're you're creating a task. You know, again, it's a type A, create a task. But for me, I I couldn't deny who I am. You know, I'm still a, a type A focused person. So 
what I've learned is we don't need to deny who we really are. It's just how we channel it. So for me, it wasn't just creating a task to create a task. It was channeling what I needed to get out. And that is, you know, what really helped me because then I started thinking, all right, what's going on in my mind this week? How do I make that relevant to the public? And then how do I write that down? So it, it really gave me an outlet um, and, and a focus, you know, for the rest of that summer. Now, if you were to give our listeners a little bit of coaching or counseling, and everybody, this is a, a free piece of advice. <laughs> would you tell them to start a blog if they're in idle moments? Or what would you advise someone sitting in front of you in a similar situation? You really have to find out what's true to yourself. You know, journaling is a great task. I, I have a lot of my current clients do journaling work. So if putting that out there as, as far as a, a public blog goes, definitely, uh, you know, and, and if people do that, I'll help you promote it. I mean, you know, cause we, we want to get more of like a community sense, you know, that it's not just the expert to everybody, but it's, it's a communal sense. So I would definitely encourage people to do that, but more so, you know, journal your feelings, find out what, what works for you, you know, is exercise an important component of your life, you know, do that and make sure you do it in more of a mindful way. So you're not doing exercise for the sake of exercise, but if the exercise is getting out the, that energy that you need to get out, then make sure you're focused on that while you're doing the task. Mm -hmm. That's a very good piece of guidance. Thank you. Sure. So now we're going to take a closer look at everything that you went through on your journey. What about you changed the most from this experience? Definitely more relaxed. There's things don't bother me as they used to. Uh, I used to give a phrase to my clients, but I never lived this phrase. But what I used to say when my clients would be totally stressed about something, I would say to them, well, in the scope of the entire world, where does this fit? And the, that whole notion of, you know, a lot of times we're so worried about something, but it's really not that big of a deal. And there's always a solution around it. I never really followed that. I, I would tell them that and I believed in that. I just didn't do it. So I, I think that's one of the, you know, biggest things for me is uh, now that's what I practice. That That's what, uh, you know, I do. And yeah, I mean, I still get upset at times and yeah, you know, I'll fall back into some of that behavior, but the majority of the time now when things happen, I just kind of sit back, take a breath and say, all right, so in the scope of things, where does this fit and what's our solution and move on from there. Love it. What wisdom would you share that you have gained? It's hard to summarize something like that, but there's a quote that I've been using and I really, I picked this quote up as I was you know, moving on from that summer. And the quote is, we don't see the world as it is, we see the world as we are. And it's been attributed to a lot of different people. But when you look at that quote, it's really saying that our perception of the world is based upon how I feel about myself. So one of the pieces of wisdom, if you want to call it is, you know, really trying to live that quote really trying to say, if I want to find an inner peace, and if I want to find the goodness in the world, then I'm going to have to feel that on the inside and actually believe it. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to see it on the outside. And then I can, you know, approach the world in a whole different way. If I, you know, myself can see it. So part of this becomes, you know, what self care are we doing before we're looking at how do I care for others? That's an excellent point. I want to just jump in for a quick second before I ask you the next question and just point out if anyone's listening and they're not quite at that place yet that they know what self-care is. I just want to suggest you have an excellent podcast that they can listen to where you share some great interviews that will help them to start to really find how to find that self-love and just how important that is. Well, well thank you for uh, sharing that. And, and yes, I, I do try to bring on the guests who you know, ha are focused on finding that inner peace and the self-love and, and how they do it. 
And as I say, I mean, I, no one person has all the wisdom. So it's it's important for me in, 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 in that sense of community to find out what's working for other people and, you know, take what works for them and put it into what works for you. And if that doesn't work, find somebody else who's doing it and see if their way works for you. Oh, amen to that. Now, please share one of your personal habits that contributed to overcoming all of this. The writing of the blog was definitely a personal habit and um, getting back to doing reading. Uh, one of the things that I had lost uh, over the years as I got more into corporate type, uh, you know, way of being is, is lost at reading and, you know, reading things that are inspirational, whether it's uh, spiritual or uh, on mindfulness or whatever it might be. But really trying to focus that that's important. You know, the more that I can keep my mind focused on what is going on from other people's viewpoints and I'm constantly learning and I don't think we ever stop learning. Students for life, hey? That's the way I'm looking at it. You know, I, I think if we ever think we're done learning, then we're probably deceiving ourselves. Mm -hmm. Can you share one resource, like a podcast or book, that you couldn't have made it without? The book that uh, I would say is, is anything from uh, Eckhart Tolle. I really started jumping into his work early on. So I would definitely recommend anything from him. And there are a ton of podcasts out there, uh, but I really didn't get into podcasting until a couple of years ago as far as myself listening to them and so really at the beginning, what got me were, uh, you know, his books and, and some of the things that he references, you know, I picked up some of those, but I would definitely start, uh, you know, with his works. Do you have a podcast or two that you'd like to recommend that you listen to? Uh, definitely your podcast. But uh, other than that, a lot of the podcasts I listen to actually are based more on my hobbies than they are on mindfulness. So that's one of the things that helps to keep me uh, focused it is diversifying, you know, where, um, you know, I, I focus on other things as well. So, Thanks. That's so kind of you and definitely good to have some hobbies outside of personal growth. Yes. Now tell us, what is one of the things that you're most passionate about today? Spreading the word about finding inner peace, you know, and that it's possible to do that and how do i know it's possible because i've been there and i'm really passionate about doing everything i can to get that message out there uh you know to really focus on the how to do it but i think what's most important is we have to just start by saying yes it's possible and i believe it's possible and then you start finding out you know the ways that have worked for others and what can work for yourself mm -hmm. Now, coming in for our grand finale, share with us uh -huh. a parting piece of guidance and the best way that everyone can connect with you. Parting sense of guidance. There's uh, another quote that I use often, which is, uh, there are no problems, only solutions. And I think if we uh, focus in on that quote, whenever life throws us something, that would uh, hopefully help us to keep that focus, that you know, no matter what happens to us that there's always some sort of solution and sometimes the solution is the acceptance we just kind of have to accept you know what is at the moment so yeah, i love that quote and the best way to get a hold of me is over at my website lifesjourneyblog.com and over there you'll find access to my podcast my book my social media sites how to get a hold of me for uh counseling and life coaching work. It's all there. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for spending some of your Sunday with us. That was my pleasure. And to all the listeners of the Second Chance community, you can find Chris at www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Of course, I will have his Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, the quotes and everything that he shared today at the website. Every day is a second chance.com. Thank you again, Chris. Thanks for tuning in to Second Chance Radio for the most positive and uplifting time on the radio. So tune in again with your host, Gina Kane of Second Chance Radio. Second Chance Radio. Second Chance Radio.
Thank you for listening to this podcast episode, and I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening and have a very mindful day. listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.